I went live privately. Come on, man. Get your shit together. So big sell-off on Friday. And Tuesday, I sent an email or text message alert to everybody in the Money Flow Trading Society. I know maybe you're too busy to be there. A little text message to their phone. And I said, if you want to hedge, if you want to short, now is when you do it. And that was this day right here. Now, I said, I wasn't going to. I don't really care about the market going down. Okay. And I'm not looking to short it that short. And if you are, your target is going to be right in here. And we're going to talk about that. And that's a normal price movement. Now, let's see. Looks like it's coming back up. So, hopefully we're cooking with grease this time. If not, I'm going to jump off here and redo it because it's really aggravating me now. So the normal movement of price is this right here. And we see price, and you'll notice these two circles. These two circles are very important. This is, if you go to page 28 of the money flow, you'll see this is the foundation of the money flow uh, concept. The foundation is built around the 20-day moving average. When pi price is below it, it means the stock wants to go down. And when price is above it, it means the, price want, the stock wants to go up. All right, people are coming in. See, Instagram got an early preview of me messing up. All right, everybody, welcome to Money Flow Sunday service on YouTube. I went live on YouTube a little while ago, and I had it set to private because I do private videos on there for certain people. Certain people are special. They need private videos. So that's what we do on there. I had it set, and I didn't turn the setting off. So we were talking about price moves in four stages. And it can only do one of three things, go up, go sideways, go down. And it's how do we define it? And you say, well, I don't know if that's true, Gerald. Okay, well, that's called sideways. And that's called down. And this is called sideways. And then this is called up. Okay? And that's the movement of price. And what you're seeing there is price going sideways, going up, going sideways, coming down, going sideways, going up going sideways, now coming down. And each time it does this, there's a concept inside of trading, and, and you probably know what it is, but if you don't, you want to repeat it, called support and resistance. And support and resistance is where price has stopped before. Price has memory anywhere it's been before. So when it was over here and put in a lowest low, on the way down, it's going to tend to stop in the general direction, and that's where we get the term support. Get it? Support, like child support, right? You're supporting. It's supporting price. And resistance is where price has been before and it tends to stop. And you can have you can have it in, you can do it on all different time scales because all of this stuff is fractal, man. It's all fractal. Looks like we're, we're cooking with grease on YouTube now. Sorry, earlier I had it set to private setting. You guys aren't private, though. Let's see. The money flow trading system is fractal. Fractal is a never-ending pattern. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. That's this right here, man. This is the ongoing feedback loop. Every day you get a new bar. Every day you get a new bar, man. There we go. Let's kill that, man. So now we're tracking with Grace. I can't see your comments on YouTube. All right. So is if as I approach the stock market every day, someone says, what do you think about this stock? I think this. Where is it? Now, that doesn't mean what I don't think fundamentally. Well, fundamentally, you can do the research and you can go read. And one of the things I recommend is that people read Barron's. Barron's. Like, be a big grown person and buy an actual magazine subscription and read it. That's a big accomplishment for some people. And read it. Most of the people that are going to fail at the stock market don't read. Okay? They're not reading. The more you start reading things, looking at things, other than tweets, 
We can't get our stock information from Twitter, okay? You might follow a trader on Twitter, but you're not getting any intelligent information on Twitter. You're just getting comments, okay? So you need to read up on things. Like this week in Barron's, there's a whole cover story was on water and the water scarcity. And then they talk, had an article about six stocks that are being revolutionary in the water sector. Well, that could take a year, two years to play out. But maybe from that article, you start building a position in some of these water stocks using the money flow. And you're like, well, when do I buy them? Right here. And if we can go and figure out what they're worth, a value to the company, every time they're undervalued and they go down and they go sideways, we could accumulate. And you could begin to invest over periods of time. There is no investment that's a one-time thing. This is a forever thing, okay? Until you decide to tap out and you want to start dripping your money out, right? And so that's investing. That's how we use the money flow over investing. But what about trading? Well, our time frame shortens because we're trading. And so as we were watching, now watch this. This is the S&P. Look how perfect it's been doing these money flow patterns. Their support, right? So now we can create our sideways because there's a definition to creating a stage. What is a stage? A stage will have an anchor point, which is the lowest low of the movement, meaning a stage move. move. So there's a stage move, a one, and then there's a stage move two, and each of these have a definition. A stage two move means price breaks out of a stage one. It goes above the 20-day moving average and it begins to climb. How far? I don't know. It's unknown. It's unknowable. It might go for three weeks, three months. I don't know. Okay, goes up, 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 up. Then stops. Well, guess what it does? Same thing it did on the stage one. It's bipolar. Meaning, if you if you have my new ebook, The Two Selves, you had the human strength to read it. It's 31 pages, it's gonna be difficult. And you read it, you'll see there's there's a there's a duality to the universe. A three is just a one. A two is just a four. An uptrend is a downtrend going the other way. This shit ain't complicated. And the same definition of a stage two, price breaking out of a stage one, climbing higher above the 20-day moving average, closing above it, same thing to a four. It breaks, a, it breaks the stage three, goes below the 20-day moving average, and now goes the other way. Not complicated. You could teach a child this. And so as we watch the S&P moving through the stages, I don't have any opinions. I don't give a shit where it's going. It's going up, going down, whatever. Over time, it goes up. It's rigged. Go look. Hey, mom, what was the S&P when you were born? She doesn't know. Nobody you know knows that. I know that. Do you know? Then you say, what do you mean? Well, what was the S&P when your kids were born? You say, why is that important? Well, it could get them into college for free. All this college debt, all people had to know is where the S&P is. It is literally that simple. And you're like, what do you mean? Well, if your parents would have cared about the four stages of price movement and the money flow, you wouldn't have any college debt. They would have just threw a couple hundred bucks every month in the S&P. And then if your dad or mom had presence of mind, when they saw stage ones, maybe they buy a little more. And when it's running up, they just set that cash aside, waiting for the next stage one. You're like, yeah, but they would have needed 15 minutes to pay attention, Gerald. They can't do that. There's all kinds of sports games on TV to keep up with. And there's all these things that buy for your time and interest. And so if you were building your kid's college fund and you were just buying stage ones, and it's like, okay, man, I need this. Well, I don't want to buy this. I don't want to buy this. And what if we could not buy this, but buy this? But here's the thing. The game is so rigged, even if you literally bought the highs, you're going to be okay. That's how rigged the game is, man. And you don't believe me? Just step back and look. Go all the way back. When was your grandfather born? This is a rigged game, guys. It goes like this all the way to 1850. Once you understand that, internalize it, this thing gets silly. Okay? Now, individual stocks, they got their own little dramas to worry about. CEO may fuck up. They may do things. Maybe, they're, maybe they get put out of business. Maybe new legislation comes and it doesn't work, but genuinely the average stock in the stock market is going to go up over time unless some force hits them that puts them out of business, kills sales, or otherwise they mismanage, which can happen from time to time. That's why we have diversification. 
and we diversify. So as I watch these, 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 this pullback was not a surprise. Remember? I mean, if you're in Discord with me, we all know that. We hit the 200 day. The RSI is extreme. What? Remember I said it's got to come down to at least here to keep going. I mean, it's got to work that off. It will not keep going ever. I just gave you a secret to the stock market. It will not keep going. It can't. When this goes green, it stops. Always. 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 Think about that. Always. Does that mean you short it? No, that's not what I said. I said it stops going up. So that's where we are. It stops going up. It's got to pause. And it's going to do one of two things. It's going to go sideways or go down. That's it. And so as we know that, if we see the RSI banging 70, should we get super aggressive with our trades? No. Matter of fact, if you have trades on, you better adjust your stops because the market's done. That's a completed move, man. Going from one extreme to the next. Completed trade, okay? Completed. Look, it completed. Same thing I teach every Sunday. Have for years and years and years and years and years. That's a stage two up move. Shouldn't be a surprise to any student of mine. Now what? Normally we go sideways. Now that three could become a one or it can turn and go down. There was our first indication that maybe it's going to go down. We got a little juke move where it came back above. We're like, oh shit, we're about to go up because we got support here. There's support zone here. And if you follow, I said I was not getting short. I have no interest in being short. I got a lot of things that I think are going to go up during this down move. So what do you go? What do you mean? Meaning I have stocks that are going to go up. Even if the market comes down, there's stocks that'll go up. Okay. So if this comes down as a trader, we just flip it. And I assume it's going to go what? Where it was before. And that'll create the movement of, of the four stages of price movement. And that wouldn't be strange or mysterious or wow or unexpected. And they say, but it's the Federal Reserve. Okay. Or it's four stages of price movement. I don't need to know what it is. This is what it is. You can just change out the actors, the tweeters, the presidents, the Federal Reserve chairmen, the bank. Those guys come and go, man. This shit stays. And everybody, it, a lot of times people think it's something important. Well, this yelling, they don't, they're just pieces of the pie, man. They get moved in and out. They're just wheels on a spoke. This movement will continue no matter who is president, whether it be Trump, whether it be a Democrat or fucking, they could make Putin president. This is going to keep playing out. This right here. It's going to go up, go sideways, go down, go sideways. And over time, it's going to drift higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. It's rigged. Everything, the government, all of society is behind the rigging. You know why? Because the people in politics have their money in here. Now, they don't give a shit about you, but they do care about the stock market. You meet people sometimes, they're against Wall Street and all these other nonsense. It's like, here, hey, let me help you with a brighter idea, human. Why don't you join them? If you know it's rigged, if you know they're giving themselves money, why don't you get on that side of the, you know? But some people resist it. I watch people protest on Wall Street. They don't even own stocks. It's like, damn, you're protesting that it's rigged and you don't own any? You don't even want to play a rig game? It's rigged, man. It's going up, dude. But in the meantime, it's going to go sideways and move down. So on Tuesday, I put out, if you want to hedge or you're thinking about getting short, this is the time. Right there. We had a completed move. Let's look at everything that laid out. We had an anchor point to the previous stage four. We need at least four days, one, two, three, four, that go above the five-day moving average. That is our stage one. We can draw a line. We had a stage one. We're looking for the breakout next, right? There's the breakout price above the green line. <clears throat> Let's talk about that green line in a second. <clears throat> the moving average is page 29 of the money flow or the foundation to the money flow trading system as an indicator and technical analysis that helps smooth out price action by filtering out noise and the random fluctuations of price. A moving average is a trend following, lagging, by the way, indicator because it is based on past price. 
Now, the government will say past performance is not indicative of future results, but I don't know what else would be. Uh, the two basic and common use moving averages are simple. So all you guys that smoked a lot of weed in high school, you can do this too because it's simple. A simple moving average. And then for those that are a little more math-oriented, we have what we call an exponential moving average, if you want to be fancy. Exponential moving average adds more weighting to the first day than the last. And you go, what do you mean? Well, let's say we're going to average 20 days. That'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 20. But an exponential puts more weight on the newest information where, where a simple makes it all even. Meaning the last day and this day, today, are exactly even. With an exponential moving average, it's front-loaded. Meaning the newest information is worth more to moving in. And so it tends to react to price to offset the lagging concept behind ending, began moving averages. So I play the best of both worlds. The five-day and the 10-day are exponential. Meaning the first days are more, more value to the calculation than the last day. Okay? And you can go read on that. That's what it means, simplify. And what I'm most concerned with is the crossover, but even more than just the crossover is the relation of the moving averages. I want the five day on top of the 10 day on top of the 20. And when you get all of those numerically aligned and price below them or above them, whatever the case may be, that's the direction. And that's what you see happening here. The five days cross the 20, the 10 days cross the 20, they're numerically aligned, 5, 10, 20, and price is below them. Look over here. You can see. Here, let's save this for a second. Let's look. Where's the 5-day? 4.13.52. Where's the 10-day? 4.16. Is the 5 below the 10? Yep. It's 5 points below the 10. Where's the 20? You got 4.17. 10 days, 4.16, right? So the 10 is below the 20. I told you. Even the weed smokers can follow this. One point. It's one point below the 20. Where's the five? It's below that. They are numerically aligned. I don't even need to see the chart. There's 417, 416, 413. What does that tell you? Five day, 10 day, 20 day. They're numerically aligned to the downside and price is below them. We are now in a stage four decline. Now, the indicators gave us, this is why I, I tweeted. I didn't tweet, I text. Sometimes I tweet, I text on Tuesday, if you want to hedge, now is when you do it. Now, let me help you with this. People stress out, freak out. You're going to get a bunch of these. So when, just practice. You can just buy one put. Don't make it complicated. You're practicing. So here, here we go. We draw it out. There's our, there's our anchor point. Here's our anchor point. What is this? Ongoing feedback loop, very definition in the book. This is an ongoing feedback loop, man. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over again in an ongoing feedback loop. Okay, here's where it gets complicated. Driven by recursion, fractals are images of dynamic systems. This is chaos. What you see on your screen here is chaos. Some people think they can figure it out. Like they got little fortune tell. They doing tarot cards or something. I don't know where it's going. I just know what it is. Success is always organized chaos. The world and the universe are perfectly balanced. The planets never collide with each other. The roots of the trees are always long enough to stabilize the trunk. <clears throat> the sun never gets too close to the earth and the rivers and streams lead into the lakes and the sea. The fact is, nature has a very crafty survival system. It's a system that eliminates the weak from gaining too much power and authority. To protect itself, nature purges itself of anything that can't handle the pressure, people included. Nature does this to make sure that the strong will be around to assist her in keeping everything in order. Not the weak. The weak need the strong. Like as much as you might, oh, what about those, those poor, they don't care. Nature does not care. Like causes produce like results. It's a predictive model. And you go, what do you mean? Well, where was the S&P when your mom was born? Where was the S&P when you were born? Where was the S&P when your kids were born? Where do you think the SOP be when their kids are born? It ain't rocket science. People who... 
opt out of investing, just opt into poverty. Because it's not, it's not complicated. It goes up. Success, authority, and oceanfront property strictly reserved for the mighty, for the strong, and for the doers who have the stamina to withstand the severe social stigma of failure. Maybe you'll get it wrong. Took me a minute to get it right. And so as we got an anchor point here and we got an anchor point here, we confirmed by the RSI from one extreme low to an extreme high. Didn't quite touch it, but close enough because it's an index fund and it's very hard to get an RSI extreme on an index fund. It's harder. So now we got a completed move. And so if we're looking at the money flow, I'm like, all right, I got a completed move. I got a stage one clearly defined. I got an anchor point price rose above the five day, gave me four days sideways, helping me declare a stage one. Then it broke out declaring a stage two. So now we know for a fact that was stage one. Now we're in stage two. And what are we looking for next? Stage three. And this is why we take profits on RSIs. And one of the hardest lessons for me to teach, and it'll be the hardest lesson for you to teach, and people refuse to listen to this, but selling a stock that you're down in, if you're trading around a position, is called trading. You lock in some of the loss, you let it come down, and then you prepare to put more money back into on a stage one. It's called trading around a position. It is the hardest concept for people to understand. You mean sell when I'm down? But what if my price is up here? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And if you follow this, what you'll end up doing is trading around the money flow and you'll be selling into strength, buying into weakness, selling into strength. And if you get that move right and then you combine it with several other stocks, guess what? It's called rolling money forward. Now you're trading. Now you're trading. But if you get hung up on where you bought it, where, which obviously nobody cares but you, the market doesn't care. Our side goes extreme. It doesn't give a shit where you bought it. 1045, curse word. It doesn't care where you bought it. Nobody does, just you and maybe your mom. Oh, Johnny, it'll be all right. It'll get back to there. Nobody cares. It's the stupidest hang up. You think there's some value in where you bought a stock. It has zero value, zero implications, has nothing to do with your trading, making money, nothing. Because you could roll out of that loser and roll into one that goes up 300%. The bank ain't going to ask you, did you make that money in the same stock? No. No, I did not. So let's look at one that was flying this last week. We took some off. Now, if you trade with me, you don't need me to tell you, okay? Listen, you don't need me to alert you and say, 70 RSI, you need to trim it. You don't need me to tell you that. You know that. I wrote a whole damn book. I've done 10,000 hours of video. Why would I need to repeat it? Meaning you should know that. This is how you start managing your own portfolio. Now look, if you haven't noticed, look what this little pattern we see here is. Okay, you don't need to be told, sell this, sell that, okay? Once you learn this, you don't need. I just let people know that so you can see how I'm personally managing my portfolio. Now look, what do you see there? Look at that, what do you see? That's the money flow, sideways, up, sideways, down. That's a fractal pattern in an ongoing feedback loop. The ongoing part is every day you wake up, they give you more numbers. There's an open, there's a high, there's a low, and there's a close. Every day we get a new bar. And I don't know what it's gonna do, up, down, I really don't care. I absolutely do not care, okay? If you have a diversified portfolio, some growth stocks, tech stocks, dividend stocks, REITs, and you spread it out. And here's the thing, that's gonna take time. But in today's world, shit like in finance, you can have a 70 stock portfolio in one afternoon, click a damn button. Like it's not complicated, man. So if you're stressing over it, you're doing something wrong. Maybe you're getting purged. Maybe nature's purging you because you're one of the weak. So you gotta ask yourself, am I being purged? That's a breakout. And you go, what do you mean? Because well, we know the definition of a stage one. Here's the anchor point. Don't be purged, man. Here's the anchor point. A lot of people get purged. Quick way to get purged. Trade on margin, trade options. It won't be long. You'll be purged. Now, as you build experience and, and skill set and repetition, you can use those to get rich. You can make a lot of money with options. You can make a lot of money trading on margin. 
But if you're doing it before you put in a bunch of time and a bunch of hours, it's just a matter of time before you blow up, man. One, two, three, four, prices above the five-day moving average. We now can call this a stage one. We can call this a stage one now. It kind of started to break down there, and then we got back up. Again, another buy signal, especially as an investor. Where's my target as a trader? Previous high. Bam. Why? That's the money flow, right? Price goes sideways, price runs up, price goes sideways, price comes down. We know that pattern is going to play out over here. But here's the thing. We don't know how far it's going to go. So, yes, we use the previous high as one target. Bam. Take, say, 10% off. So if you bought 100 shares at 900 bucks, now you're at 1300 bucks. Give yourself 130, 140. Pull some off, 10%, 20%. The more you need money to roll forward into other trades, pull more off. But what you don't want to do is pull it all off, expecting that it's going to go sideways and come down because you don't know that. Now, based on this too, we know this stock is worth about 30 some dollars. If you go look on Morningstar, Zacks, Tip Ranks, there's so many places to value a stock, okay? Don't make that complicated. Well, guess what? It keeps going. Good. Then what? On the RSI, we're going to sell a little more. And then what? There's a reversal candle. Price sell a little more. So I'm dripping out of it the same way I drip into it. And what is this? Just a giant stage two. And look. Look what, look what happens. Now we have our what? Stage three being built. There's the highest. Let's clean this up for a second. Stage three is what? A stage one. Bipolar nature of the universe, man. A one is a three. Previous high, that's the highest high. Matter of fact, it was even confirmed right here. That's stage three, man. If you got money in this, you need to get it out if you're trading. So you start dripping it down. Is it a sell signal yet? No. It's just a downsize into profit signal. There's stage three, here's stage one. This could keep going sideways, work off the RSI down to a 50, and then run again. But what's the likely chances of that? Well, we could go look at the value. What if the stock's worth $52 a share? This is very likely to happen then. But what if the stock is worth $26? Okay, now it's true value. What's the chances that it rips and keeps going? You see how fundamental analysis is added to this? Because sometimes people are criticizing. Well, do you know any fundamental analysis, Jerry? Yes, but I don't want to talk about it on YouTube because it's boring. We're going to sit and talk about cash flow and balance sheets and EBITDA. There's plenty of places you can do that. I don't want to do that. Okay? But of course we do that. It's called fundamental analysis. I teach real estate, but I don't walk around telling you about copper wiring and cloth wiring and this kind of circuit breaker because it's boring. Or this kind of t t tile versus this tile and this kind of grout versus that kind of grout. That's not what you need to know. You need to know the numbers. You can figure all that shit out on your own. Right? That's called research. And so as you research stocks, which you should be, you should research stocks, man. That should be part of your day-to-day -day reading. Like, you should read on the stocks. If I said to you, you know, like some things you should know, man. Like, how many people work at Pepsi? Uh-oh. Like, how could I know that? It shows you an E-Trade when you re well, click on it and click on the company. It'll say 75,000 people work for this company. It's a multi-globe. Like, these are the kind of things you want to know, man. That's what you want to spend your time on, okay? Learning that kind of stuff. I mean, if you can know a baseball stat, shouldn't you know a stock stat? Stocks can make you rich, and baseball's not going to unless you play it. So unless you're playing on Sunday, I don't know why you'd spend a lot of time on that. Mm. Meaning you should spend about that much time on stocks, man. If you do that, I'm telling you, you'll grow richer. Because what you think about comes about, and what you focus on is what grows in your life. And so what we have now is the shit that we've been focused on the last three, four years. So three to four years from today, the things you focused on will be what you have in your life. And, and if that's not, you know, whatever it is, man, it could be anything. This stuff is so rigged that it's, it's almost comical. The market, how to achieve things, how to gather things. The money flow trading system uses a simple 20-day moving average. As a rule, if price is above the 20 SMA, we look to trade to the long side. Right here. This was day one. Now, if we back it up, we go, yeah, there was stage. Here was the anchor point. Price was above it. Cool. This is a stage two. And the moment I take this trade, what's my exit point? Previous high. This is just OGP. 
previous high, and then the RSI. And as it moves up, I'm gonna sell into strength so that by the time it breaks down into a stage four, I'm at half the position. So let's look at utilities for a second. I'm in a half position. And you say, why would you be in half? Let's look at it and I'll show you. I'm in a half position. I have not closed it out yet, but on this down move, which I fully anticipated, which is why we need to be down to half. I mean, we had all the signals. This is a perfect money flow move. Previous high. There's our anchor point right here. Anchor point. There's our above the five day. That tells us now we're starting a stage one. Price makes a run, breaks it. It was a little wacky because it went down so much. You see that it's a, like a bouncing ball or rubber band effect. Whenever you get that where it separates this far from the 20, you know, you're going to get that bounce back and then the pullback almost always on all charts. Um, and that, that's a whole different class when they get this far away from the moving average. But anyway, we're back to breaking out. Boom. Where's our first target? Right here. Where's our next one? RSI. Notice what? We got a top. Anchor point, one day, two day, three day, four day. That calls this us. That confirms the stage three. We're just not below the 20. Now we're literally below the 20. So if we go to the money flow, what do you see? Best time for selling as a trader, meaning you need to be getting out of this trade. So you should have already sold into it. If it gives you a perfect run, nice breakout, runs up, tags previous high, goes into the RSI extremes, downsize, downsize. So you're liquidating every day. Every day into it moves higher, takes some off. Moves higher, takes some off. Little bits, man. One, it does. There's no commissions. You can just finesse it. You can just a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, man. Right? So now when it finally does break down, I don't have that many shares. So this move wasn't that big because I have half the shit that I had going up. So when it crosses over, boom, I can get out. Maybe it holds here. But this is a triple leverage fund. So it goes from $29 to $48. This is one of the ones we like to trade. Maybe you don't get all the way out. Maybe you just take it down to 25% and you're cool to write it down. You know, you get to decide how you want to play that. This is a triple leverage fund, though. Remember that. This is a triple leverage fund of utility stocks. So what if we went and looked at utility stocks? XLU. These are utility stocks, right? That's what this is trading, the utility sector. Well, let's back that up onto a monthly chart. Where's price? Holy sheep shit. All-time highs. Now, just because it's all-time highs doesn't mean it's got to come down. But at some point, it's going to come down. All-time highs for utility stocks. What's that telling you about the economy? I mean, this is where people are storing money instead of bonds. Look at SO, Southern Electric. So if you're inside the money flow... If you come over here, these are my buy and hold stocks. And you're going to see, if you come through here, what are my top five dividend stocks? BX, Southern, Southern Electric, right? There's some others. We got Duke in here. There's Edison, ED, right? New York. That's an, let's see, what else we got? There's Duke, D-U-K. That's another utility play, right? So we have these utility stocks. So each time there's a big sell-off in utility stocks, I watch the money flow. What am I waiting for? An anchor point. As soon as I get an anchor point, which one do I want to add to? I don't know. It's different each time. And then over time, I just build those up, man. Now, if I wanted, I could take some down here. I haven't taken any down on my buy and holds, but I have downsized my trade. There's a difference in trading and buy and hold, right? I really don't have, I really not really interested in selling any of these right now. Um, if they go much higher, I will. But if they just want to pull back, set up, cool. Am I buying aggressively if they pull? Nah, nah. I would buy this aggressively because that was such a big sell-off. So once you understand utility stocks, that they pay dividends, and you follow these sectors, and you understand the money flow, shit, you need this. If it wasn't for this, we wouldn't have all the money here. Oh, man. Let me repeat that. If it's not for this... If it's not for these juicy moments, these moments here aren't as good. It's the bipolar nature of the universe. I need it to come down in order to make money. Uh -huh. 
The very thing that can make people the most money is the thing they fear. It's crazy. You guys are telling your kids don't talk to strangers. Johnny, whatever you do, don't talk to strangers. It's probably his uncle he needs to worry about, not strangers, man. Strangers have your money, man. Everybody does it backward. Don't talk to strangers. And your kids grow up, can't sell shit, can't talk to nobody, and you wonder why they're broke. But other people have your money, man. And so as you begin to follow cycles, what happens? You can see, man. You begin to see. These stocks have your money. But you're looking for a particular setup, man. I mean, you need to talk to strangers. Stocks you don't know about have your money. People you haven't met yet have your money. People you haven't met yet, we're going to land you a job, get you that deal, that promotion, that sale, become a partner, help you find the real estate. People you don't know, not people you do know. If your friends were going to get you there, they'd already be there. Mm. So, careful who you hang out with. Careful who you hang out with, bro. So, let's go back to the S&P, man. So look at the Qs, big sell-off. Down we go. Um, the Q signal. We had enough days here, but it started to move up. We started to get upward momentum right here. So we had this little trick day. When that broke was your signal. On, so on Friday around 10, 11 a.m., I sent out a text that said, hey, we're, we're breaking down. We're going into a stage four decline. Now, we already knew that it was breaking down. We already had all the signals, right? The RSI. It wasn't as extreme on the, on the uh, it never really hit it on the cues. There's our pivot point. And so what? We can sit here and draw it out, man. Where do we expect it to go? previous low, right? So right around in here, where it stopped before a bunch of times, right around in here. These, This is not perfect science. This is just general zones. We do have a minor support zone right in here, but it's literally in the process of breaking through it. So we'll see where people, you know, maybe, maybe they count the bottom of it. Maybe they're going to count the top. Maybe this zone in here holds. We'll see. It very well could. That's why I'm not, I'm not really short. I'm not very bearish. Um, you know, this is just a normal pullback. This is the normal movement of price. Everyone likes to be a big freaking drama queen. Every sell-off is the end of the world, and we're going into the worst recession. It's going to be blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, enough with that stuff, man. Stop. Stop reading those articles. Stop listening to fear mongers. It's just price movement, man. This is what price is supposed to do. It's going to bang the RSI, and then it's supposed to stop going up. It went too far too fast. That's what RSI measures. And then it's supposed to come down. People take profit. Fear and greed move the markets. Fear and greed, not logic. So it's going to come down, and then people are going to realize, oh, wait, it went too far. Things aren't as bad as we thought. And then it'll start to go sideways. And then all of a sudden, a little good, and then it runs. And it's just the flow of price, man. That's just how price flows. There's nothing weird. There's nothing, you know, apocalyptic about it every down move is that you need down moves you only made money in southern if you got the big down move okay so we need these big down moves so we can get our anchor points so we can position ourselves to make money so if you fear these things you will never accumulate wealth in the stock market never never i'm telling you if you only get happy on up days and you're never happy about down days you will always struggle with the market The 20 SMA doesn't predict price direction, but it helps define current direction. There is an old saying on Wall Street, the trend is your friend until it ends. The 20 SMA, simple moving average, helps you define that trend. Uh, I will discuss to tell you when a trend ends later in the chapter. The point is, once a trend has presented itself, we stay with it until it receives clear indication that it has ended. You must give it the benefit of the doubt. Like Newton's law, objects in motion tend to stay in motion. A trend in motion tends to stay in motion until it isn't. Um, since we aren't in the predicting business, you simply react to price based on the reaction to price to the 20 simple moving average. The price allows us to <clears throat> the moving average just allows us to respond to price instead of trying to guess direction and often end up missing the move. 
The benefit of the doubt goes to the current trend until the moving average begins to break down and the numerical alignment of the moving averages. If you stay <clears throat> in order, there is no reason to try to second guess the market and make a prediction. Mm. Not in the predicting game. If you can, maybe you get it right, but that's it's hard to do that long term, man. We talked about that already, the alignment of the three moving averages, 520. Um, let's see. I used to talk about the 50 day inside of the, the money flow. I, I, I've removed that from newer editions. I, I no longer find any value whatsoever in the 50 day moving average. No value whatsoever. Not outside of this. It adds no value. A lot of people think it does. It doesn't. I, I, I would show me some evidence or proof that it, the, the, that the five, the 10, the 20, and the stages wouldn't have picked up the MACD, the statistics. It adds no value. <clears throat> the only value it adds is people who trade with it. I don't have it on my screen. I don't need it. It has no bearing on my trading. It's, it's, it, it doesn't fit inside of the model of, the, of this because it'll give conflicting signals. And so, you know, I finally just removed it. it you know, there's no point in having conflicting signals. Let's see. Here's one we've been inside inside of our Discord group. UAN. Now, if you're in my Discord group and you ever hear me say, a little birdie told me, that means for some reason I can't tell you why or what's going on. I don't text those. I just put them in Discord and I say, a little birdie told me. And these are people that I have a lot of respect for that trade, usually professionally, and they see something that I don't see and they let me know. So here was a previous high. We got an anchor point and it moved. And notice this, it hit an anchor point. Now, some of these guys work at hedge funds, work on Wall Street, things like that. And there's a previous low. Now, if you notice, they coincided. Right? See that? So we got an anchor point. So when this stock is brought to my attention, first thing I do is lay it over the money flow, and I start backing all this out. Okay, previous anchor point. There's the stage four decline. It goes down. Where are we at now? Well, say a guy mentions the stock to me here. Hmm. Well, we're not really extreme. If we're not extreme, I'm not buying a lot because the move isn't done. Did you catch that? Notice this is not extreme. What does that tell you? It means it can just keep drifting down, down, down. If it doesn't drift fast, you're not going to get an extreme. Meaning if it just barely climbs and 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 barely... You're never going to bang the extreme. Notice it doesn't hit, well, notice over here, it doesn't get near the extreme until it really rockets up. So you've really got to get movement. And that's what the RSI is measuring, velocity of price. So if price just ticks higher, five cents higher, and it keeps going higher and higher, it's never going to trigger the RSI because that's just a slow grind. The RSI is telling you price has moved too far too fast. It's the velocity of price. Not that it's gone too high. It's just that it's done it too soon over its 14-day average. And so it's collecting data, ongoing feedback loop for 14 days. And we know when it hits it, often it stops. It did right here, right? But look, then it kept going. As soon as it, it what happened? It worked it off. So if this wants to keep running, when it works it off, as long as it stays on this side of the 20, I give it the benefit of the doubt. That's what I just read to you right out of the book, man. Right? So that's what that part talks about, man. The money flow system uses a simple 20 day moving average. As a rule, if price is above the 20 SMA, we look to trade to the long side. And price is considered bullish. If price is below the 20 SMA, we look to trade to the short side or, or, or go to cash. Price is considered bearish. Now, that's not talking about buy and hold stocks, okay? So look, it stayed above the 20. And as this began to firm out, what does that tell me? It's more likely to go up. It's above the 20. I don't even need to think about being bearish until it goes below it. And that would have been the pattern, right? Sideways up, sideways 
down. But because we give the benefit of the doubt to the 20, we caught another big bump. Now what? Well, if I was trading, I'd probably take some more down. And what are we waiting on for the bump? As long as it stays above the 20. And so by downsizing the share count, I can give it a little room to move. I don't have as many shares on the way up as I have. I will. Um, I want to have as half as many on the way down as I had on the way up because then that makes this move down disproportionate to the move that was up, right? And so if I, I don't time it just perfect, it's okay. I've already taken most of it off, right? And so if I begin to look at that as drips in, drips out, and where's price and relate? Like, look at this, 5, 10, 20. This is as bullish as it comes. So we're in this. We've made 35% to the upside, plus they paid a special dividend of $10 a share. Well, that right there paid for Discord. If you had eyes to see and ears to hear. But if you're if you're busy, most people are too busy being busy to get rich. Because if something showed up at their house that would make them rich, they won't notice. They're busy. Oh, I'm so busy with work. You're so busy with work, you can't get rich. Most people are so busy with work, family life, they can't get rich. They're too damn busy. There's no room for it. They wouldn't even see it if it fell on their lap. Hmm. Don't believe me? One day, Amazon delivered a box to everyone in America. And they could have said, hmm, this is cool. I can keep ordering. Or they could have said, I'm going to buy the stock. And that was a choice. But they're busy. So they don't buy the stock. And that's what happens. The universe has given you opportunities all the time. But we're busy. And our brain's on other things. Oh, I didn't see that. We drive by houses that are for sale. The kids all the time, oh, I can't find any houses. Yeah, that's because you don't push your intent to the universe because you actually don't give a shit about buying one. The moment you give a shit about buying one, it'll give you one. I've watched it happen to a thousand people. People come to my house every couple months and we do this get together and I shake hands and talk with people. I've done dozens and dozens. Man, follow your content. It's doing what you said. I now got three properties. And I'm like, really? Because there's people that live where you live that claim they can't find any. The difference is this dude wanted it. And so his eyes were open. And so as he drives around, as he talks to people, as he pushes his intent into the universe, man, and you know, come in a box wrapped up for you. And guess what? You got to be prepared for it. So that if it does show up with a great idea, a business idea, a concept, a thing, one day I'm sitting on my porch. And I had a mentor, an unusual mentor, by the way, very strange fella. And he said to me, what you give away, you get to keep. And I was like, wow, I never heard that. And he goes, yeah, you have. Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. It's the same thing. What you give away, you get to keep. That's why I started giving away the money flow, meaning I just go out and teach it. Here, let me show you how to do this completely free. Just shut up and watch. Sit down and listen. And I'll show you. And guess what? People bought my book. So it's I give, I receive. It's better to give than to receive. And that's one of the great business concepts. Jesus had an MBA in business. People make it complicated. It's not complicated. Give people more in use value than you ask for in monetary value. And guess what? They'll tell their friends. It's a built-in marketing system. And I began to just act on that shit, man. And, and it was a strange fellow, and he told me what you give away, you get to keep. And I said, huh. And I began to apply that to all areas of my life, man. All areas. And But I had to be open to receive that, man. And then one day, I got, and I won't go into great detail, but an idea for a business thing on the internet, on a website. And I ran that website for years and made nice money. It was just a side business. And I was able to take that money from that, from a concept, from a guy who told me, but if my brain's not open to it, if I can't receive it because I'm too busy being busy, then guess what? I don't get to execute on it, man. So a buddy of mine the other day says, hey, G, about, I, I, write, I hand write five to 10 letters a week. Hand write with a pen. You guys know what a pen is? A paper? I hand write a letter to five to 10 landlords in my area every week. Now, most people, how do I find that? Tax rolls, man. So when you go to the tax rolls and you see one name and they own a bunch of properties, you're looking at a landlord. 
and they just scan the tax rolls, looking for names that pop up a bunch of times. So if you look in my area, you're gonna see my name, blah, 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 because I own all these properties. It's not secret, it's public information. And you can see what company or corporation owns it, and you're looking for mom and pop, and then you hand write them a letter. This is the address they pay taxes from. And you hand write them a letter. It's not that complicated. You can find out who, there's all kinds of ways to find out who owns a property. And he hand writes them a letter and a guy hits him back. Yeah, man, I'd love to talk to you. I got a bunch of properties. I'm looking to get rid of a couple of them. And that area, properties are too expensive. But it may not be that we cut out the realtors, right? If we're just doing a deal between ourselves. But my point is that's pushing your intent. Same here, man. People always tell me, what stocks, man? You got all kinds of stocks in your house. You're using them, why don't you trade them? Look at Ford. A lot of people drive a Ford, don't own the stock, man. Dumb as dirt. Now what do we see on Ford? You know, moving up, tag to 20, just like we thought. That's a whole nother strategy called the butter, bread and butter, right? So in other words, these stocks are all around us, man. They're all around us. They're all around, we gotta be in tune though, man. We gotta be in tune. And, and how that comes to you, could come from an unusual mentor, could come from someone like me, could be a, something I said, could be an article you read in Barron's, but you gotta be open to seeing it, man. Could be something you read, you saw on Reddit. I mean, I don't know, but don't, don't make it a huckster way. One time I'm listening to Grant Cardone. Yeah, man, a lot of people are like, I don't like Grant. Okay, whatever, don't like him. I'm listening to him, because he's good at sales. He's better than you, he's rich. So that's how I determine if I'm listening to them, if they, are they better at something than me, okay? So as I'm listening to him, this is years ago, stock is trading around 25 bucks. And he said, when he goes to sell all his real estate, he's gonna sell it to Blackstone. I go, I wonder why you would do that. I didn't DM Grant asking him. People DM me and ask the dumbest shit you could have just Googled. I'm like, man, if you'd have Googled, then you would have had a better question. And then people say, well, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Yes, there are. And it's not even the fact that it's a stupid question. It's the fact that what it presents about you. Meaning if you ask someone who's doing something a stupid question that could have been Googled, it tells them you're lazy. That's what it means. It's not the fact that the question's stupid. It's just like you didn't, go like what, is, what does PMI mean? Google it. And then you save that person time. You have respect for their time. So then the next question you ask them could actually be a legitimate question that, that they could actually help you with instead of like, you know, should I buy an index fund? Most of the time, the questions I get asked are just dumb as dirt, man. And it's like, that's not the real question, you know? The, no one ever asked me what book I'm reading. I always find that weird. They always ask me what book should they read. They never ask me what I'm reading. Interesting. So I started buying it over here because an uncommon mentor, an uncommon person mentioned it and my brain is always looking toward it and pays a dividend and I've done videos on this one. I think I've made 50 something thousand dollars doing nothing. And all I've done over the years is accumulated some stage ones and then, you know, big move down, we buy maybe some more. And then we just leave it alone. And that's what we do. Now, I don't know the future. Maybe it comes back to 10. Maybe they go out of business. I doubt it because over time, stocks go higher. And that was one just watching YouTube, listening to a guy. Now, here's the difference. When I bought it in 2000, shit, dude, I've owned it since. It was had to have been 2000. Yes, yeah, 2016, 15. So it was right around in here. Now, notice this. This is important. I want you to notice something. In 2016, yeah, it was right around 2016, I began buying it. Maybe a little earlier. Comes down. And look, there's almost a whole year where it does nothing. You know how many people sell it? So I had a whole year to accumulate dividends. It doesn't do anything. The price is $25. A year later, it's still $25. Oh my God, Daryl, but what about uh, this? Whenever I have this, this is when people will say to me, but what about cost of, uh, what, what is it they always refer to it as? as uh, 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 God, I can't even think of the term. 
They're like, this is dead money. It hasn't done anything. That's what people do. And it's like, you don't, you can't read the future. Just because something goes up doesn't make it good. Maybe the best thing for it is it went down. So that you could have got some more to then get a good position so that when it did go up, you'd make some money. You get what I'm saying? And so if you watch this, so it's not based on a short period of time. I had a kid crit criticizing me about DS. And it's like, bro, it's going to get to five. And if it does get to five and it took three years, that's better than if it took one year. Because I was able to accumulate more. Duh. But the simple Brian can't get that, man. They're not thinking accumulation. They're looking quick scores. So look, multiple times we had big sell-offs, right? So the only reason I get to over here is I just keep it. I just buy more, man. I buy some more, buy some more, and I let it run with no intents of selling it. I don't need to sell it. I don't ever need to sell it. They pay me a drip, right? So that's the money flow, man. So as I watch this, you know, once I got enough of the stock, and I, let's say I save five or ten thousand dollars is what I'm looking for. After that, I, I stop buying it. I don't even need to pay attention anymore. It'll go up and it'll go down. It'll go up and they'll pay me dividends down. And when it sets up into stage one, I buy. That's not trading. But guess what this allows me to do <clears throat> if I watch the flow? It's easy to take an investor and make them a trader because an investor knows about sitting and waiting. An investor knows to be patient. An investor knows things take time. And so he already has the fundamental principles that'll make them a good trader. And as they also know how to watch stocks. And they also, if they understand stage one, two, three, and four. And so if you own a stock and you've owned it for years and years and years and you see it set up and you know how to swing trade, you click over to your swing trading account, you buy some call options or a spread or a condor, like my buddy, like you get what I'm saying? You can then take those more complicated strategies and you could do synthetic longs through triple leverage funds or, you, you know, using call options or you could, you could use margin. But you want to do that after you've met, you've learned the four stages of price movement, after you've understood moving averages, simple moving averages, indicators, oscillators, right? Understand all of that. The, you've been through a few cycles, ups and downs, and you built, you have the stomach to withstand it and you don't get purged. Then as you've been through that and you're like, you can't purge me. Once you've been through that a few times and you have faith and confidence in the market, what better trader are you going to be? My God, the reason people fail at trading is they start and they don't have all the fundamentals. That's why, because dude, let me let you in on a secret. Nobody knows where stocks are going. There is no magic strategy. There is no magic person. There is no guy that like, there's people that intuitively can do some things better than other people. Meaning I can show you how to play golf. That don't mean you're gonna play golf like Tiger Woods. He's built, he's got a certain height. <clears throat> so if you're five two, He's 6'2", he has an advantage, just physically. Meaning some people are just smart. They can calculate math fast. So options, deltas, gamma, beta, all that shit makes total sense to them. If you struggle in math, you're gonna struggle in options. So why don't we lean towards something that fits your suit? And you're like, man, I hated math. Then don't do that. Don't try to make yourself do something that you're not. Let's work with your natural abilities. You're like, well, dude, you know what I am? I'm, I'm super, like, you ever, like, I had buddies who like, I fucking hate deer hunting. I can't sit in the stand, dude. One hour into it, I'm fidgety with my phone. I'm reading a book. I'm about to go crazy. My brother-in-law can just sit there and go, duh, and stare in the woods for fucking hours, all day, not moving, just staring in the woods. I go insane, right? So I don't have a disposition for that. So either I have to develop it or I have to say, listen, I got to hunt a different kind of way, man. Same in trading. So don't try to be a trader that you're not. Like, don't try to be a day trader because you think it's cool when you may have a natural inclination for swing trading, right? And it also fits your lifestyle. You got a little baby. You're going to be day trading. You got a baby. Come on, get for real. You really think you're going to pull that off? Maybe. Maybe you're an outlier and you have a natural disposition to, to, to day trade. Then it'll make sense. So how do you know if you have a natural disposition? You're in your comfort zone. So if you're not comfortable or if you're panicked or at edge, that's not your natural disp disposition. I mean, you can't be an NFL quarterback going to fucking panic mode when it's when you're in the third quarter and you guys are down, right? So you can't, like a lot of people I trade with go in panic mode. It's like, well, bro, this is not for you, I guess. I guess you were born to be poor. 
Some people are born to be poor. Jesus said the poor will always be with us. Always. You're always going to have poor people. Always. And you get to choose, do I want to be one? Here's the thing. We always have poor people and we always have a choice. The 7% club is reserved for people. You can just join it, man. Buying houses, stocks, this stuff, you can just join it. But, but, but it always starts with the basics. If you have a lot of debt, man, it's going to be a hard struggle. That should be your focus. Come trade with me. We'll trade small sums and we'll pay that debt off. Sometimes people tell me, well, I can't trade because I'm focused on debt. Man, bullshit. You can trade little bitty trades while paying off your debt. Okay, you can come up with two grand to put an account. This is all you got. Yeah, it slowed you down by a week or two. Or you go sell some, or you paper trade. My God, how about that? How about you just do it just to learn the skill set? Paper trade with someone, right? I find people tend to not pay attention. If you are trading with me, and let's say you don't have money for a trade, take it in a paper trading account or buy one share. Like be in the flow, man. Spend a year just being in the flow. And you're like, oh, it's too many. Good. Iron sharpens iron, man. We need to press on you a bit. Like you need to be pressed a little bit, man. You need to be pressed. This is a learning stage. So the first year you're trading with me, it's not to trade your way. I mean, if I guess, I don't know. I guess you could come in and completely ignore what I'm doing and do some, I don't know why you'd be there, but you could. But let's say you're not. Then take everything I take and try to dissect it. Why do you do that? That's the whole point of it. It's not for you to blindly follow me. It's so that you can learn the money flow, man. And so you can go set up a paper trade account with E-Trade. You could trade with me and have no money in it. Have no money. And then what you'd have is a year of fucking learning. And then you didn't lose any money. But you learned. What happens if you did that, man? Jeez, a year of that. I mean, I can't even get people to do a year consistently with real money. What if you do it with fake money? Man, you'll be a beast. Right? You know, Tiger Woods played golf without getting paid. Michael Jordan played basketball for like 12 years, didn't get paid. Most of the Gandhi didn't get paid in the beginning. Martin Luther King preached for free. I mean, if you don't have an interest and you can't do this for free, you will never be successful. I don't believe that for a second. You want to be successful at real estate? You do it for free. First deal, you're not making any money. $200 cash flow, one water heater's out, gone. You're not making any money. The time, if you add up the time going over there and cleaning and looking for shit and trying to find, you might spend a thousand hours trying to find the property. You're not making any money. You're only going to make money through the repetition of time. Time. And that's one of the things about the markets that gross me out. People come in with some expectation. They're going to blow it out, make a bunch. It's so stupid. Nobody else talks like that in any other field. They don't do it as lawyers. They don't do it as doctors. Oh, I just got started doctor. I watched a video on YouTube, so I think I'll take your larynx out. Nobody does that. There is no other profession in the world where people come in with an expectation of doing well. None. There's not any legitimate job because people don't see this as legitimate. Well, it is for me. I got a million fucking dollars in here. One million. It's pretty damn serious to me. Every day, serious. Complete fucking focus. Super serious. But if you got chump change in here and you've invested chump change and you're easily dis dis distracted, you're not going to take it serious, man. But if you can make yourself take it serious without that, if you can do it for free, because if you took my million dollars on Monday, I'm transferring a few bucks to E-Trade and I got to trade, man. I trade because I'm a trader. I invest because I'm an investor. I don't invest to make money. Money is a byproduct of being a good investor. Meaning to be to get paid as a trader, you got to be a good trader, which means you need to like trading. And we'll determine that when you do you keep doing it when you're not doing well. That's the guys that do well, man. So think on all that. A lot of this is mindset, man. And this stuff here I can teach you easily. It's everything else that goes with it. It's your focus, man. It's what the world is going to steal your focus, man. That's the problem. Invest in yourself, man, first. Get rid of your debt. Start building up that trading account. You should be putting money in that trading account all the time, even if it's just a little bit. Put money in it, man. Why? That's a that's a commitment to you. That's a commitment to you, man. You're believing in you. The 
did YouTube even work? All right, it says it did. I hope YouTube worked, man. I can't, uh, I can't see it on here. Let me turn on uh, Instagram commenting. Yeah, we're on YouTube, man. All right, listen. If you don't have my ebook, just go to GeraldPeters.info. Pretty simple. All you guys that don't trade with me, I don't know why you would do that. Why wouldn't you trade with me, man? I thought we were friends. Maybe ask your wife real nice if she'll let you. Baby, can I trade with Gerald, please? Can I please do that? Maybe if you ask her, she'll let you. Or ask your husband. Baby, can I... Go join the money flow gang, please. Maybe if you ask real nice, they'll let you in. You can't ask me what books I'm reading after I brought it up, man. It's too late. It's ingenuine. You really don't give a shit because I said it. That's the only reason you care now. But if you ask your wife, maybe, can I go do that? Maybe she'll let you, okay? And if you ask your husband, maybe he'll let you. Maybe you'll get control and you'll be able to do something. I hope so. I hope you'll come. And if you do, pause due to bad connection. And if you do, if you do, trade the money flow away, man. Spend some time on it, man. The biggest problem I have is people come in and they start immediately filtering everything through their time and their experience, this and that. And if so, if you're good, you're good. Don't don't come to the money flow gang if you feel like, oh, I'm I'm good, man. I then do it. Then good. Do you? Uh, okay, the purpose of it isn't, isn't I'm not going to change anything for you, is what I'm saying. And so, if you're doing good, do it good. <clears throat> I don't change my strategy. It doesn't change based on what's happening in the market. It doesn't change based on interest rate. Nothing changes. I get up every day and do the exact same thing I did yesterday, period. I know the game is rigged. I know it's a fractal system. I know over time I'm going to win. It cannot shake me out. I'm not loaded up on margin. I'm not doing a bunch of dumb things. The stocks I own are ride or die in my buy and hold. In my trading, I got either, if I'm position trading, I ride them down, right? Because I believe in my ability to position trade on my way out of them. You go, what do you mean? I'm, what if I'm down 50%? I know. And then I would ride it up and I would take some off, let it come in, I'll add. And over time, I will trade my way through PayPal, any of these stocks, okay? Now, you may not believe that, so that's going to be hard for you to do it. But having done it now for 20 years, I believe it. But I can't make other people believe in my experience, right? Because they don't have the same experience, okay? You get what I'm saying? So it's going to take time. So if, if best piece of advice for you is take time. Got to take time, okay? Take time. And then take time. And then, you know, apply the basics. And then diversify yourself. Don't be all in growth stocks, guys. Don't be all in you know, oil stocks. Don't be all in utilities. Don't be all in anything. Get ahead of some of this stuff, man. Build it out, man. Build it out. Build it out. <clears throat> and and take your time. We got plenty of time. What's up, Nick? What's up, man? So let me be like the professor, man. I know the professor would be a... Oh, let me shut you two down. Appreciate you guys on YouTube. Professor always be doing this stuff. Where you at, Professor? Trading from the beach today. <laughs> oh, it's funny. You guys be good, man. 